Hey guys, Paul here, the Impulsive Culinarian, and in this video, I want to talk to you about some Shao Kao Chinese barbecue. Yes. So very popular street food in Beijing. Uh, this Chinese method of barbecue is so delicious. The spice mixture is the secret. So, you know, traditional barbecue, I mean, is done over some coals. I've got a gas barbecue, so I'm going to sort of cheat a little bit. I'm not going to get the coals and all that stuff going, but I am going to pay careful attention to trying to preserve that traditional spice mixture. So a large part of that is peppercorns. So I'm gonna be using this sort of like this four spice mix of different peppercorns to get that essential flavor going on in this spice rub. There's some ginger, there's some garlic powder. It's a dry rub and it's very powerful. You can make it spicy or not, but this traditional spice mixture is really gonna add some kick. Let's get into all of the ingredients that you're gonna need for this Shao Kao. All right, let's split this out into two parts. We're gonna talk about the spice mix ingredients. First, two tablespoons of Chinese five spice, two tablespoons of mixed peppercorns. If you have just black peppercorns, that's fine, but preferably mixed. Six cardamom pods, powerful stuff. One tablespoon of cumin seeds, one tablespoon of kosher salt, one tablespoon of paprika, one tablespoon of ground ginger, half a tablespoon of chili powder, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a tablespoon of onion powder, and then the last optional part, which gives it a little, a little bit more kick, is one teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. Next, we're gonna talk about the main ingredients. Guys, essentially, you can grill anything that you want in this style, but the ones that I'm gonna be using for this video are three bunches of green onions or scallions, half of a pound of yellow beans. I couldn't find yellow, I'll be honest, in this recipe I'm using green beans, but just for some color, yellow if you can. One large green zucchini, six portobello mushroom caps, the nice big ones, one pound of shrimp, around 20 shrimp that are in the size 20 to 30 should do the trick, peeled and deveined. One pound of beef tenderloin, some filet mignon. So get the good stuff, guys. We're gonna trim that and cut it into half inch size strips. Uh, some olive oil for the cooking process, and extra salt and pepper. So let's get this part three of the barbecue recipe series underway. Time to prep. Shao Kao barbecue. I've been wanting to try this forever. So perfect opportunity in the barbecue series. So welcome to part three. Um, and guys, this is all about the spice mixture. It doesn't really matter what you're grilling in this style of barbecue. It's about the dry spices that you're going to be grinding up and using to uh, season all of this meat and vegetable uh, selection. So the, the stuff that is in seed form, like your peppercorns and your cumin seeds and these very powerful cardamom pods. If you've ever seen these before, if you've eaten at an Indian restaurant, and uh, these are powerful. You don't need many of them, okay? So we're just gonna put a half a dozen of those, a bunch of peppercorns. If you follow that spice mix, you're gonna see that it's pretty powerful and very um, reminiscent of things that come from the Silk Road. That whole tradition of how those flavors came together is pretty spectacular story. So I'm not gonna go into that now because that's an entire video of its own. So anything that's in a seed or like this, you know, peppercorns and stuff, get that into a grinder, all right? If you've got sort of like a little grinder or a mill uh, and get those into a powdered form. Once that's done, you can just mix it with all of the other powdered ingredients in a medium-sized mixing bowl. Shao Kao spice mix right here. Once you've ground up your peppercorns, cumin seeds, and cardamom pods, yeah, you add those to the rest of the powdered ingredients and you are in for a pleasant surprise. So whisk those ingredients together until they're nice and combined, and then you want to set that aside and start prepping your vegetables and your meat. All right, so let's talk about skewers. If you're going to be making Shao Kao, you've got to arm up on some bamboo skewers. Now, the weapon of choice are these nice, thin bamboo skewers. Thin because some of the ingredients like the zucchini uh, and you know the green beans, they're already small to start with. So if you've got this massive bamboo skewer and you're trying, no, it's like you gotta thread the needle with something small. So that is the first thing that you wanna grab. Um, I'm doing a bit of a fusion. I'm using portobello mushrooms, clearly not traditional ingredient, uh, but um, I'm using the large, the thicker bamboo uh, skewers for that because they're big 
and I want to have something that holds onto them properly. So thin and thick bamboo skewers. Uh, matter of personal choice, I've had these metal barbecue skewers or camping skewers for a long time with the little heat safe handle there. These are very cool. So that's what I'm going to be using for my, um, my filet mignon, my tenderloin. That's going to be cut into thin strips and I'm going to stick those on the metal skewer. <clears throat> Can't wait. So let me give you the tour. Let's have a look at all of these skewers that I've prepared so far. So when I think of Shao Kao, the very first thing that comes to mind when I originally researched it a while back is this, the green onions, the scallions, skewered and barbecued. It's just so unique and it, it really, to me, speaks volumes about how the respect for a simple ingredient but turning it into something really special, that's Shao Kao for me right there. Another thing, you know, similarly done are the green beans. I like to use the yellow beans for color, but I couldn't find any, so we're just going to do them like this, very similar style. The zucchini rounds, of course, and that's why you want to use those thin skewers so you can actually thread the needle. All right, a couple of skewers of that. The portobello mushrooms, this is a must. Uh, I really love the flavor. They're, they're sort of like the vegetarian uh, steak, <laughs> okay? So a couple of those thick skewers, and that's not going anywhere. Easy to flip. They're not going to get lost in the grill. And of course, some of my favorite shrimp ever, the wild-caught Argentinian shrimp. So I've skewered those on the lengthwise. That's another sort of speaks to me about how Shao Kao is that traditional thin, you know, uh, skewers of meat. So that's great for anyone who's a pescatarian or a... Uh, you know, not, not eating red meat. And of course, the pièce de résistance, the filet mignon. So I'm going to slice these up into sort of half inch thick strips and I'm going to get them onto my metal skewers right now. Oh, it's exciting. I got all my stuff skewered up. The vegetable plate, the pescatarian plate, and the meat plate. Let's get down to the barbecue. Next up, barbecue. All right, let's get the barbecue going. Crank everything up to full heat, get the whole grill going. Guys, never use steel bristles to ever clean your grill. Huge danger hazard. I know it's been out there on the news a lot, but in case you didn't already hear, get a piece of cedar and clean off your grill safely. All right, so there's one thing that I forgot to include on the ingredient list, guys. It's some oil. Now, you can use grapeseed oil, olive oil, anything that's good with high heat on the barbecue. And essentially, you want to season the oil with a good amount of uh, fine sea salt. I'd say a teaspoon of salt and just around three quarters to a cup of oil. Now, this is what you're going to be using to brush all of the vegetables and the meat. And that's going to go right on the grill. And so that's what's going to help it brown and char. And the seasonings, I know you might be saying, but aren't we supposed to season the meat? No, that bowl of spice that we've made, that Shao Kao seasoning, trust me, there's more than enough flavor in there. So once you've got everything ready and your grill is really up to high heat, get that down to around medium on all the burners and let's get ready to grill. Another handy thing, guys, is to get your Shao Kao spice mixture into one of these sort of Parmesan shakers so that, you know, you're in control of how much spice you want to have on your final cued product. All right, so it doesn't really matter what order you start grilling stuff in. Basically, as much space as you have, load up the grill. Hot spots only. My favorite one. Close it up. So most of these ingredients have different cooking times. The green onions, for instance, are going to start to char and wilt probably after even one minute on that one side. So you want to flip them over before they burn. And grill them on the other side. That smells fantastic. <laughs> That's a bubble. It's bigger than your head, Sam. <laughs> All right, so those scallions, probably the first to come off. A minute on each side, and made them look fantastic. Beautiful charm marks. So gently get them onto a plate. Now, as soon as you got a free spot on the grill, add another skewer. Don't waste the space. As soon as that spice mixture hits the food that's on the grill and it just obviously becomes a true Shao Kao barbecue experience. Yum! The Shao Kao barbecue is in full effect, hey? Never leave a space on the grill. Pack them up. 
Now, the shrimp go really fast, as you know, because they only take literally 30 seconds aside to cook. So I'm going to spice those up right here after I've dredged them in that salted olive oil. And as soon as I hit them on the grill, they're basically going to be done within seconds. Oh, these shrimp skewers are beautifully seasoned, oiled up, and ready to hit the grill. High heat, a minute. All right, so I've saved the steak for last because even though traditional Shao Kao, you're supposed to do everything well done, all right? Because I think there's probably a safety concern, these street vendors, there's not a lot of rare meat going on. But we have the control right here to say, you know what? I would like to have a medium rare Shao Kao uh, beef skewer. So let's oil them up and season them up very generously. So guys, don't skimp on the spice for that beef. It's the pièce de résistance, load them up good. So when you're using a good quality meat like this, guys, you don't wanna mess around, don't be shy, load up the spice, give it that flavor it deserves, and trust me, once it's done grilling, you will not be disappointed. So filet mignon is notoriously tender, but because it has less fat in the meat, it's not as flavorful. So we're adding, we're packing in the flavor right there. So get that on the grill over high heat, I would say medium high heat, and just char it on either side, maybe 30 seconds per side, that's it. So that's what we're looking for, guys. We've cut this filet mignon into half inch slices. You don't wanna ruin it. You give it 30 seconds on each side, and that's it. It's gonna be fantastic. With all that spice, we're gonna let it rest, and all of the grilling is done. So I'm gonna crank up everything to full heat, clean off the grill. Let's go upstairs and eat some lunch. Mm, I can't wait. I know, it's gonna be delicious. Oh my God. So what's your official job for lunch today? What are you going to do to help me out? I'm going to taste test at the end of this video. It's such a tough job, but someone's got to do it. You want to get us upstairs, please? Sure. Who's having a Shao Kao barbecue party? We are right here. This is a spread. So I've taken everything off the skewers. I put them in little serving plates. Let's have a closer look. Check out this Shao Kao barbecue feast, guys. Our green beans and scallions, some delicious seasoned shrimp look at how those have charred up nicely and they're nice and pink some gorgeous zucchini and those portobello mushrooms grilled on both sides and well seasoned <laughs> and the pièce de résistance look at that beautiful filet mignon just pink in the middle we've controlled the temperature and they're just so tender i mean absolutely mouth-watering and this is the way i do shao kao so there you have it guys this is my fusion take my own rendition a tribute to Shao Kao barbecue, all right? It's done on a gas grill. Traditional is always charcoal, but you know, this is sort of the North American version. And I can tell you guys the flavors that are coming off of this, every single bite mm, is an absolute pleasure. I might try a piece right now. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Lots more good stuff coming up on the barbecue in this series. My name's Paul, the Impulsive Culinarian, and I would love to have you join me live right here from the Impulsive Culinarian Kitchen every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, where I open up a brand new bottle of red or white or something delicious, good match for the summertime. So I hope you join me here live on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter. Guys, I'll catch you in the next video.